Hello guys, welcome back once again to Bobcat Corner. This is episode number 26. I'm your host as usual, Stephen Vitz, coming to you from the foothills of the Appalachia in the Chillicothe area of Ohio. And I want to get this episode going. Uh, we're just going to keep it simple here today. Uh, just a topic that any college football fan would talk about. Um, for the Ohio Bobcats, we have an upca- upcoming game uh, this Saturday. It's going to be starting at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday, October 12th. And that will be between the Ohio Bobcats and the Central Michigan Chippewas. Now, this is a uh, in-conference game, so that means this is part of the MAC conference standings, which will this will affect. And basically, I titled this uh, video "Thoughts on Central Michigan" because I just want to give my thoughts on what I'm seeing from Central Michigan, the Chippewas. Um, and case in point, let's just start here. The Bobcats are the road team; they're visiting Central Michigan. Mount Pleasant, Michigan. So the Chippewas are the home team. Usually when you're the home team, you get some sort of boost from your uh, hometown fans, usually. And uh, in the case of the Central Michigan Chippewas, um, uh, these guys are no joke. I'm just going to say it right now. They're no joke. Um, I believe they're uh, well-equipped for uh, games like this. I do believe that they can be contenders for the MAC Championship if things fall into place for them. Uh, And the Chippewas, they weren't really talked about all that much going into uh, this season. Uh, They were talked about as like a middle-of-the-pack kind of team. But as you can see right now, guys, I think the Chippewas have potential to be for real. And with that said, though, I do believe the Ohio Bobcats are easily well-equipped to handle a team like this, as I will get into here shortly. Now, let's just get through it. The, my thoughts on the Central Michigan Chippewas. Uh, basically, I'm going to go through the stats for the last couple games that the Chippewas have been involved in. And I'm just going to dissect the stats here for a little bit. Uh, last couple games for the Chippewas have been, you know, to be honest with you, uh, more impressive than it probably should have been. Now, these last two games Central Michigan has been in, they've won. They've won close games. They've been hanging in there to the very end. And that does uh, play a factor in crucial games like this. This is, like I said, this is an in-conference game. And both teams know that. So I know the Chippewas know that too. Now, one game here, one game here uh, between Central Michigan and Ball State, that's, that was an earlier game this year where Central Michigan beat Ball State 37-34. And the stats here for Central Michigan, Joe Labus, hope I'm saying his last name right, Joe Labus, quarterback for Central Michigan, he completed 14 of 20 passes for 185 yards, one touchdown, and he, he took one sack, but still, uh, he played well enough in that game. And there were like plenty of running backs – that Central Michigan has to use that they have on their roster that they can use to just, you know, do damage on the football field. Running back B.J. Harris, eight rushes for 151 yards against Ball State. Mary, Marion Lukes, 13 rushes, 81 yards, one touchdown. Nari Biggins, three rushes for 71 yards. And then Burt Emanuel Jr., seven rushes, 33 yards, two touchdowns. That is uh, highly impressive when it comes to the running game. At least I believe so. And yes, it's against Ball State, but just keep all this in mind. Uh, As far as uh, receiving goes, wide receiver Chris Parker had five receptions for 79 yards and two touchdowns against Ball State. Uh, Wide receiver Evan Boyd, three receptions, 78 yards. Now, the interesting thing about this game between Central Michigan and Ball State was that Central Michigan had to score late in the game. With 16 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter, uh, Joe Labus, he managed to complete a 20-yard touchdown pass to Chris Parker to give the Central Michigan Chippewas the deciding score. 
So that is significant. And now let's switch over to the next game, which was uh, the last game Central Michigan played before they took their bye week. Uh, and that was and that was against the uh, San Diego State Aztecs, uh, who have been in the news lately. So Central Michigan defeated San Diego State 22-21. Yeah, one-point game. And once again, Central Michigan hung in there late because of stats like this. Joe Labas, quarterback, he completed 24-43 passes, so he passed much more in this game for 275 yards. One touchdown. Yes, he threw one interception, and yes, he took three sacks. But still, the product, the productivity was there for uh, Joe Labas. He did just enough for his team. B.J. Harris, 13 rushes, 41 yards, one touchdown. Marion Lukes, 16 rushes for 76 yards. And in the receiving game, Marion Lukes had three receptions for 57 yards and one touchdown. You can tell how valuable Marion Lukes is to this Central Michigan team. And then Burton Emanuel Jr., six rushes for 32 yards. And as far as receiving goes, uh, tight end Gavin Harris, he showed up for this game against San Diego State. He had two receptions for 66 yards. Uh, back to wide receiver Evan Boyd, six receptions for 51 yards. And then wide receiver Jesse Pruitt, the third, six receptions for 42 yards. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I really, I really believe that's impressive for a Mac school. In the case of Central Michigan, I am definitely uh, taking note of what Central Michigan has to offer on the football field. And just like I did for the game uh, against Kentucky, which obviously that one did not go well, but uh, I made a, a graphic here, a short graphic here for um, this game between the Bobcats and the Chippewas. And I'm going to sh uh, share it with you guys on screen here so you can follow along. And these are just basically my thoughts on Central Michigan when it comes to how the Bobcats measure up against Central Michigan. Let's just go through the list. Number one, Central Michigan, as you can tell, they have many running backs, but they maintain a balanced attack. Now, I just mentioned in that game against Ball State that Central Michigan deployed as many as four different running backs in that game. They used a lot of running in that game, guys, and you have to take note of that because Central Michigan is basically following the basically following the blueprints of any Mac school. Most Mac schools typically they like to run the ball a lot before they can start opening up the pass, which is a uh, philosophy that I can't argue with. Uh, Central Michigan, they know how to use their running backs. I truly believe that. And as far as the balance attack goes, uh, they have more they have more than a capable uh, quarterback in Joe Labas, who I will get to soon here. So you got to take account. You have to take into account what Central Michigan is going to offer on the football field. If you've watched any of their games, guys, you would know what Central Michigan is about. They're almost, I would say, almost a mirror image of the Ohio Bobcats in, in some ways, I'd say that. Now, number two on this list of my thoughts on Central Michigan, yeah, don't give Central Michigan the ball late in the fourth quarter. I think it goes without saying, guys, if you've seen the last two games the Chippewas played, uh, when they had the ball late in the fourth quarter, they, they did something with it. They scored. They got the key plays that they needed, and they won the game, whether by three points or by one point. It is very critical in this game. If it gets down to a game like, say, 24-21 or, or even 31-28 or something like that, the Bobcats have got to make sure they don't give up the ball late in the fourth quarter to Central Michigan. Because if you let a team like Central Michigan get the ball late in the game, like let's say – three minutes to go in the fourth quarter, you're going to be in trouble. Central Michigan is going to make you pay. So I'm hoping the Bobcats take note of that. The time, timing is everything in this game. So it's just a matter of when you give Central Michigan the ball is what's really going to dictate the pace of this game. Number three, let's just get to it. Number three, 
Uh, pressure the quarterback, Joe Lavis. Now, that's that's part of uh, the whole thing here. Joe Lavis, he has a he has a strong offensive line, strong enough offensive line to work with. They block well enough for him. He has enough time to make throws. I mean, yes, you can you can get him on the ground and you know take him down for sacks, but when you give him enough time to pass. He's going to do it. He's going to find the deep route guy and he's just going to make plays. He's he has shown it throughout the course of the season that that he can do it. So it goes without saying, guys, if you're the Ohio Bobcats defensive line, front six, front seven of the defense for the Bobcats, you have got to apply pressure on Joe Labas. You just have to do it. You have to find creative ways to pressure the quarterback. And this is something that I go back to when it comes to that, you know, aforementioned um, game against Kentucky. When I mentioned about Brock Vandergrift, you have to pressure him. The same thing is going to apply here with Joe Labas. You have got to pressure the quarterback. You've got to get him on the ground. You've got to get him down for sacks. Bat the ball down if he tries to get the ball out for a pass. You've got you to gotta frustrate the guy. You've got you to gotta make the quarterback uncomfortable. Even if he ends up making a pass, you got to make it as uncomfortable as you can. That's all there is to it. That's your that's your role on defense. And I'm confident about that because I was reassured with how the Bobcats performed against Akron. And yes, I know it's Akron, but still, when you can apply pressure like that, such as what that that two point safety play against Akron, that's the kind of that's the kind of mentality that I'm looking for when it comes to uh, the defense. You got to make the big plays when they're when they become available for you. So yeah, pressure the quarterback, Joe Lavis. Now number four, and this is like my last uh, noted thing here. Win the time of possession battle. Now, when you have two teams like this, when they're both trying to specialize in running the ball, this key thing happens. Time of possession. It becomes a matter of, okay, who has more time to work with? Are you using up enough time on the clock so that your opponent cannot do anything with the ball? When you get two teams like this, Ohio and Central Michigan, which have shown that they want to run the football, you know, there's going to be a tug of war, so to speak when it comes to the clock. So I truly believe that if the Ohio Bobcats can do what they do with their running game, if they win the time of possession battle just enough, they might have a chance of really, really beating the Central Michigan Chippewas. And ultimately, guys, I really believe we're going to do it. I mean, yeah, the Central Michigan Chippewas, they present a significant challenge. They are. All due respect to Central Michigan. But I do believe this is a challenge that we can be up to. I do believe this is a challenge that we can take on, that we can overcome. This is a winnable game. I truly believe that. And yes, uh, Central Michigan, they have, they have the most players returning to their squad from the previous year, as opposed to Ohio, which had 58 uh, players go to the transfer portal. I get that, but even with that said, you know, you got to believe that you can do this. And if the Bobcats believe that they can do this, then that's all there is to it. it just who wants it more on the ba- who wants it more on the football field, you know? Now, I also noted in uh, Tim Albin's press conference that he had recently, he mentioned 11 and 12 personnel. Now, in case you guys don't don't know what that's about 11 and 12 personnel. That's like a, a football term that coaches use to describe the uh, offensive uh, packages that teams use like 11 and 12 personnel. How many, um, how many uh, wide receivers, how many tight ends are, uh, are uh, teams using now when you have like 11 personnel, 12 personnel, that means like one wide receiver, one tight end, and one wide receiver, two tight ends, you know, things like that. 
and I can go over this as much as as much as possible, go in depth about this, but you have to understand the lingo, the terms of the of the formations, such as eleven personnel, twelve personnel. Where are they using? So yeah, that's what Central Michigan uses, and I'll provide uh, I'll provide information about that about these terms in the description box below, so you can follow along here. Um, but also what I can add to this real fast is that what I can add real fast to this is that, yeah, Central Michigan last couple of games before their bye week, they've been impressive, but the other games that they've been involved in, like that, the opening game against Central Connecticut State, which they're an FCS team, 66-10, Central Michigan won, okay, but that's really that's a throwaway game. It's against an FCS school. Um, and the other two games where Central Michigan lost, they were blown out by Florida International 52-16, and they were, you know, taken down by Illinois, the Fighting Illini, 30-9. So it is also a matter of which Central Michigan team is going to show up for this game. I do believe we're going to get more of the Central Michigan team that's been showing up last couple games. But there is that potential for Central Michigan to have a uh, disappointing performance. So that's why I'm optimistic about this game. If you're an Ohio Bobcat fan, you got to be optimistic about this. And I truly believe that we have a shot, a legitimate shot of winning this game. So, but yeah, you just got to make sure that you don't give Central Michigan the ball back late in the fourth quarter. You got to get pressure on the quarterback, Joe Labas. Uh, I think it's important to win the time of possession battle. And you just have to take note of the balanced attack that Central Michigan is putting out there. If you can account for certain things like how Central Michigan plays, if they're going up tempo, if they're just going to pound the ball, it's if you can take note of all those things, you can do it. That's just how I feel right now. So, yeah, I just want to get this. Uh, I just want to get this episode off, guys. Um, uh, lately, um, I have not been feeling all that great. Um, I haven't been showing my face as much lately. Uh, I've just been more tired than usual, to be honest with you guys. But, uh, yeah, I just want to do this because I care about what you guys think. I care about how you guys uh, feel about this content that I'm putting out here. And I hope you guys are doing okay. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below if you have any comments about this upcoming game. And as I will mention here, there will be a uh, live stream recap show of what happened between the Bobcats and the Chippewas. That's tentatively going to be at 8 o'clock at night on October 12th, Saturday. But we'll see. Who knows? Maybe the game goes in overtime. I don't know. But we'll just see. I hope you guys can join me for that. Uh, just let me know what you guys think. This is Stephen Vitt reporting again. Take care. Bye.